Hello again everyone, this is American Idioms Part 65. This is the 65th video in my American Idioms series, and like the others, I'll present five idioms to you numbered 321 to 325. But first, I'll give you a chance to guess their meanings. Then, I'll give you the answers along with an additional example for each new idiom. I also recommend that you pause the video at each question to give yourself some extra time to think of the answers. So, are you ready once again? Okay, here we go. Number 321. To breathe a sigh of relief. And the example is, the election results were very close, but the governor breathed a sigh of relief after the final votes were counted in his favor. Can you guess the meaning? And the answer here is C to experience an intense sense of happiness about something. That's what it means if you breathe a sigh of relief. This idiom can be used figuratively or literally. Because you can actually breathe a sigh of relief like, <sighs> like you're very relieved about something that happened in your favor or that you really liked. Okay? In our example, they're talking about how this governor breathed a, a sigh of relief because he won the election. He won the final votes that were counted. Okay, so he was relieved. He was very happy that he won the election. Now, we don't know, but he may have literally breathed a sigh of relief. Like, ah, oh, I won. Okay, here's another example. I thought my dad had heart disease, but I breathed a sigh of relief after we got their test results back that showed that he didn't have it. All right, in this case, the person is very happy that his father didn't have heart disease. All right, so he breathed a sigh of relief when he got the news. Okay, that's what it means. All right, and now for number 322. To be in for something. And the example is, I knew we were in for a big storm when I saw the ominous clouds approaching our location. Can you guess the meaning? And the answer here is B, to be going to experience something unpleasant very soon. And that's what it means if you're in for something. Okay, to be in for something. And in our example, they're talking about how they saw the clouds coming. So they were going to experience a bad storm. Okay, the ominous clouds were predicting, like maybe dark clouds coming in. They knew that the storm was coming, right? So they were going to experience this, right? They were in for a storm, as we say. Here's another example. After I saw the low score on my last math test, I knew I was in for trouble when I got home and told my mother about it. All right. In this case, the person got a bad score on a test, and he knew he was in for trouble. He was going to experience something, right? Trouble from his mom, because she was probably going to be very upset. Got it? That's what it means. All right, and now for number 323, to drive something home. And the example is, our teacher drove home the importance of using correct grammar every chance that she got during our writing course last month. Can you guess the meaning?
Did you guess A to strongly emphasize or reinforce a point? If you did, you are correct. And that's what it means if you drive something home. In our example, the teacher was driving home the importance of using the correct grammar, all right, especially in a writing course. Very important. Okay? She was strongly emphasizing it every time or every chance that she got. Okay? That's what it means to drive something home, to reinforce something. Here's another example. His attorney did such a great job driving home his main arguments to the jury that they acquitted him of all charges. All right, in this case, the person's attorney emphasized his arguments very well, and it convinced the jury. In this case, they acquitted this person of the charges that were against him or her. Okay, so he reinforced his arguments, and he did a really good job doing it. And that's what convinced the jury. All right, and now for number 324. To be enamored with something or someone. And the example is, Pete is so enamored with his new car that he washes and waxes it every day. Can you guess the meaning? And the answer here is A, to be infatuated with something or someone, like to be in love with them. You really like something a lot. That's what it means to be enamored with something. In our example, they're talking about how Pete loves his car. He's infatuated with his car, right? He's enamored with his car. So he washes and waxes it every day. Got it? All right, here's another example. Ali is totally enamored with his new girlfriend, and he won't stop talking about her. Okay, so Ali is in love with his new girlfriend. He can't stop talking, okay, because he's so infatuated with her. Got it? That's what it means if, if you are enamored with something or someone. All right, and now our final idiom, number 325. To be light years away from something. And the example is, many people thought that using AI was light years away, but they couldn't have been more wrong. Look at our world today. Can you guess the meaning? And the answer here is B, when something seems unlikely to happen, or something that would be very far away in time, as we say. In our example, they're talking about how people thought that AI, artificial intelligence, was light years away. But as we all know, they use it a lot today. In almost everything, AI is being used, right? So it's not light years away. It's happening right now. Here's another example. I'm married with two children right now, but just five years ago, this situation seemed light years away to me. In this example, the person is talking about how just five years ago, he thought it would be a long time before he would be married and have two children, but it happened very quick. Okay? That's what it means. Got it? That's all for this video. Thanks again for subscribing and please like and share the video to support the channel. And remember what I always say, keep practicing. See you next time.